Hey, it's Charles Elwood, and I have a live show every Wednesday, and I'm going to talk about um, really, really cool, interesting markets that are starting to collect lots of data because I'm a data analyst. And um, every Wednesday, I have a live show, talk about new markets for data. Um, some of the more interesting ones I love are energy um, and home automation. In today's video, I'll be focusing on David Wolters, um, who was a guest on my live show last week. Uh, he was a photographer. He was a marketing person. Um, he has a, a, helped start a sailing team um, in, in West Michigan. And he also coaches his kids with a Lego League team, right? So incredible guy, always learning. Um, and he started a home automation company because he was watching the trends and he saw the boom in um, data automation and he decided to um, start a company and he goes around and installs um, data automation um, to people's houses, right? So he's got cameras, he's got um, uninterruptible power supplies, he's got um, beehive systems, uh, all kinds of stuff, garage door openers, and you know, the kind where you can talk to your um, system, um, you know, via Google Home or Amazon Alexa. So. So join me a little bit um, for a short video on some of the, the stuff that David um, en enjoys installing. Binge watching, you know, I, I, I'm learning a lot about home automation. I don't have much of it installed, but um, I, I contacted you because I had, you know, it, it was some kids in the neighborhood that were ding dong ditching, you know, and um, they came to the house at 11, woke everybody up. And I was, you know, I put a word out on our um, community Facebook page and I was like, hey, you know, did this happen to anybody? And surprisingly, what I was surprised is I didn't realize this, but a lot of the houses had cameras already installed. They're like, oh, oh no, we didn't. And it seemed to be a deterrent. You know, they, it seemed like whoever was doing the, the doorbell ringing, you know, looked for the cameras and was like, well, that house has a camera, so I'm not going to go there. Right. So, so, and then I was binge watching YouTube videos, um, you know, and there was a guy talking on, on YouTube and he's like, you know, the biggest application right now, the biggest need is security, um, garage door, um, door locks and cameras. Right. Um, and so I just wanted to your, your take on that is, is that the biggest, you know, um, do you see a lot of requests for, for security for cameras and doors and kind of what are, what's available in, in those realms. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. My customer who found this solar powered camera actually, so it, it's a cottage up north. I'm not yep. going to disclose the location, but his next yep. door neighbor has a grow room. And uh, yep. I learned this while I was installing the camera. The neighbor came over to chat. Uh, great guy, but he said, Yeah, I'm surprised that they were trying to get in, in his garage because I've got a grow room right next door. I think they yep. were con confused on where they were trying to break into but um yeah it was a group of people the power was out yep. up there and uh they they knew the power was out and yep. they also knew that this cottage has cameras all over it and um but the garage wasn't covered yeah so uh they showed up during the power outage and tried to get into the garage um it was the type of garage door opener that uh, has the screw instead yep. of the chain. So they were unable okay. to, to jimmy that and get the door open. Yeah. Um, and then the neighbor heard and he came out and scared him away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my customer called and said, hey, I want a camera on the garage and I, I don't want the power outage to be an issue. So I found this solar oh. one. Can, I'm going to order it. Can you install it? I said, right. Son, sounds great. I want to check that thing out. Right. Um, we also put uh, an uninterruptible power supply on his wired camera system, as well as the the cable modem and the router. Yeah. So that um, I'm not sure. I think he'll probably get five or six hours yeah. out of that. Um, but the power goes out frequently enough up there that uh, this will give him full access to all of his smart home devices uh, even uh, when the power's out. Amazing. But, I, yeah, that, that reminds me. I was just talking to some solar um, installation companies. Um, it was three weeks ago, and they were talking about 
you know, and solar is such a great application for this is they were talking about, I think, hog farms and some of the turkey farms. They have the big fans that blow through, but they can't, um, those can't go down because the air gets saturated with the dirt and the dust and the oxygen levels go down because there's so okay. many hogs and turkeys. So they need solar. Solar is a good application or, you know, battery backup is because they can't be down without power. So they typically have, you know, it's and, and that uninterruptible. And so you install those too. And yep. now there's an application and, you know, every time we have a storm, if the power goes out, you're talking, there's some applications for solar to, to fix some of that now. So very right. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And there's actually, there are uh, backup systems for your internet as well, that if your internet yeah. goes out, it will switch over to the LTE network. Oh, and right. So you'll still have, have your internet uh, up. So you know, that's, that's so funny because I, I don't know, I think it's where we are along the lakeshore, like the storms come through and knock out power and it happens you know, once a year. And then you're like, well, I got to check the outage maps and you go, you know, and if you're on Wi-Fi, you're like, I can't. <laughs> yep. can't. So then you got to switch over to your, okay. So now there's systems that automate that, detect the outage and then jump into the other one so you can have all your data. Ah, so people are thinking so far ahead. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to bring up, oh, go ahead. It's pretty critical when you have a, um, say you have an Airbnb or a vacation home, Yeah. you need, you need access to the, to the devices, um, yeah. especially during a storm. Uh, yeah. I think it's it's pretty critical that yeah. uh, you be able to at least have LTE signal. And of course with 5G coming along, yeah. uh, it's yeah. only gonna get better. But right. um, to have a storm come through and be, you know, say there, I have customers who live in Seattle and have vacation homes here or be Airbnbs that they own. Yeah. Um, they want to know that their investment property is okay. And, right. Um, but again, my smart tech plan, that's part of it is they can call and say, Hey, can you run over and take a look at the house? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, and but, now, now that brings me back to, so you're installing the uninterruptible power supplies and then all these people on the lake shore, you know, they, they could lose internet or they may not have internet and like these cell phone extender signal extenders, could be more important in the future, you know, as, as you right. install more of these powers. <laughs> yeah. Right. So That's we're seeing the integration of this into your business. <laughs> one of those things that I no, I didn't start this business to help self signals and, Oh yeah. wait, it's actually, yeah, it's part of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's really important. Wow. Um, I, I wanted to jump back too. So um, when we were talking about hubs and systems, there's a few companies out there that we're thinking ahead a little bit. Um, I think you said the Yale um, door locks, um, you you can plug in modules, I think, right? To yeah. adapt and, and go into different systems. Um, but there's some limitations with that. I think with door locks, where do you get your power, right? So maybe talk a little bit about your experience with with the Yale and have you switched out those, um, those systems? Yeah, the, so I really like the Yale system, the one that yep. you showed that has the uh, capacitive touch screen for the code yep. entry. Uh, the reason I like it is because on the bottom, oh, right where the blue bar is, yeah. so you can't see I mean, it, but on the bottom, and you can't see it when you look at the the lock, but there are two little buttons for a nine volt battery. So say you go on vacation and you come home and you have to get in your front door because the power's out and your garage door won't open and you go and lo and behold, the batteries died on the smart lock. Yeah. You can run to any grocery store, buy a nine volt battery, hold it against there, and that will power it so you can enter the code and get in. Interesting. So or, I'm trying to bring up, um, so that you said there's a little module at the bottom? Yeah, it's not really a module. It's um, it's it's hidden underneath yeah. the, the, the lip. Um, yeah, on yeah. the bottom of that touch pad. There are, okay. Yep, there are two little uh, two little tabs that you can hold a nine volt battery against, and it will power it in an emergency situation if oh. if the batteries go out. Okay. Um, I use the lithium double A's, and I'm finding, you know, in my own home, we get yep. about six months of use out of those. Okay. Uh, which is kind of startling how quickly 
those are draining because those yep. those hold a lot of juice. Yeah. Um, but it's a nice lock. We really like it. Uh, we can create a code for the dog sitter that we can yep. activate and deactivate. Um, and I just set a reminder in my phone to replace the batteries. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple customers who have those, they're subscribers. So I replace their batteries when I visit. Yeah. Uh, um, that particular lock, the, uh, the module that I recommend is the, uh, smart lock by August module. Okay. Um, uh, because it, August was, I believe if it wasn't the first smart lock on the market, it was one of the first and it was definitely the first widely adopted. And, uh, August works with it pretty much everything. So, uh, you can put that August so module in there and the August app is really, really nice. So August is, is that an, like an infrastructure and a kind of a hub system or? Uh, August makes their own smart lock. Uh, at okay. this point, I'm trying to think if you, if they still sell it anywhere, you'd, you'd look at it and kind of laugh because it's this huge, like it's as big as a doorknob. Yeah. But that's, and it wasn't that long ago. It was only three or four years ago. Um, but that was where things were, was this big thing with the motor and, and August kind of set the, set okay. the stage with that. So, um, so, so, but now they make a, a system where you can, um, yeah, I, I don't know how they're, if, yeah. yeah, they must be licensing the, okay. the technology and, and the standard to other companies. So like Yale uh, yeah. is licensing that, has Yale by August okay. in it. Um, but I like it because it, it integrates really nicely with every home automation platform. Okay. So Echo, Google, Hubitat, SmartThings. Uh, there's another hub called Vera that is. So if you enjoyed that video, um, I'm going to do this every week. I'm going to post a short video on Tuesdays and then on Wednesdays, I post to YouTube and I stream live on LinkedIn. Uh, if you go and subscribe, I would appreciate it because I'm at 68 subscribers now. If I get to 100, um, the cool thing is I get my own URL and I can start expanding um, and doing more of these videos. So click on the subscribe, go to the, visit my website um, on YouTube. You'll have to search right now for Solismatica. If you hit subscribe and we get to 100, um, it'll be easy to find. Thanks. Bye.